Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this design for the 16 by two character display. And as you can see, there are some smooth filling gauges, some icons and some small digits. And if you have seen any of my old videos, you probably know that for those types of displays, you can usually define up to eight custom characters. However, if I stop the video, it looks like that I'm not using eight, but looks like that I'm using 15, right? Well, what if I tell you that I'm actually using zero custom characters? Yeah, that's right. I'm using no custom characters at all. Let me explain. So most character displays use the Hitachi HD44780 chip, or at least some chip that is compatible with this chip. And this chip comes in two different variations. So the first variation is called A00, and it includes the lower ASCII characters. For the upper ASCII characters, it has some Japanese symbols. There is also a second version of the chip called A02, and as you can see in here, the upper ASCII characters are actually filled with characters for the European languages, and the empty spaces are filled with icons, arrows, and some special characters. Unfortunately, a display with this chip is very hard to get. Pretty much all the displays on the AliExpress and similar website will include this A00 chip. And you might be thinking, well, that's fine because there are a lot of empty spaces. I can use those empty spaces. That's not the case. You can still only use up to eight custom characters in the beginning. The empty ones will still remain empty. So how was I able to get my project running? Before I tell you, let me tell about the sponsor of today's video, which is PCBWay. And not only do they offer PCBs, but also all kinds of other services like 3D printing, or CNC machining. Plus, if you use the link down in the description, you can get 10 PCBs for free, only paying for shipping. So let's get back to our project. So how was I able to get my project running? Where I've actually used a display that uses completely different chip. The display that you see right now is called US2066, and this one is specifically made for driving OLED character displays. If I scroll down, this chip has three different variations called A, B and C. And as you can see, those are also for supporting different languages. So this one is for Japanese and it's even listed in here, Greek and English and Dutch. This B version is for all the different characters. And finally, there's this A version. That one also supports many languages, but it includes the most special characters, all kinds of arrows, all kinds of filling those gauges kind of stuff, as well as some icons and even the small version of digits. And as you might have guessed, my display includes this version of the chip. So this display is high contrast, high brightness OLED display. It's very small it requires no backlight, it has all the special characters that you might need already built in, and it even has a built-in IDE score C connection, so you don't need many wires to connect it to your Arduino. It looks like that this is the perfect character display, right? So what's the catch? Well, there is actually one, and that's this display was sitting on my shelf for several months because I couldn't get it working with Arduino. Thankfully, I have it working now, and I will show you how you can get it working as well. So let me correct the statement. I do think that this is the best 16 by 2 character display that you can get. So let's start by connecting this display to Arduino. Again, this display has the i square c connection, so the connection should be pretty straightforward. You connect the SDA to SDA, the SCL to SCL, VCC to 5 volts, and the ground to ground. And since the i square c connection requires the address, and there is actually no address being listed on this board, let's start by running the i square c scanner sketch to find out the display address. You can get the i square c scanner by going to this page and then copying the code, but you can also directly open the Arduino IDE and select File, Examples, Wire and i square c scanner. Select the correct Arduino board, which in my case is the Arduino Uno, then select the correct port and then hit the upload button. Once it's run on the Arduino, hit the serial monitor button and we should see the address for the display, except that we don't see nothing. There is no i square c address being listed in here. And it was actually the point where I've decided that I will not use this display and put it on the shelf. However, after a little bit of googling, someone suggested using the pull-up resistors on the i square c lines because the internal resistors might not be strong enough. So I've connected one 4K7 resistor between the SDA line and the 5 volts and the second second one between the SCL line and the 5 volts. By the way, for those simple connections, I really like using this prototyping shield. I believe it costs around $1 and it also includes this very small breadboard. So with the resistors connected, let's open the serial monitor again, that will restart the Arduino, and hopefully in a second we will see the i square c address, which seems to be the case. So the display was found on the address 0x3c. So once we have the address, we also need some kind of library, and I will not waste your time showing you which libraries are not working, and immediately tell you which is working. And that's this one, called 1602 OLED Arduino Library for user called Gadget. So click the code button and select download the zip file. Then inside the Arduino IDE, select sketch, include library, add the zip library and select the zip file. Then either download this example sketch or just copy this code into a new sketch. As you can see here in the comment section, the address is set to 0x3c, which is matching our LCD. So just hit the upload button and hopefully in the second, you will see the text and the digits on the display. It seems to be working fine. So let's find out if this display is really using the character ROM A. And if I look at the PDF file, I can see that this node symbol is only on the ROM A, not on B or C. So if we print this character, hopefully it will tell us which ROM is this display using. So we want to print the character with the binary code 1001. 
zero 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 zero. So we need to draw the character with the hexadecimal code 90 or decimal 144. Let's jump back to the Arduino IDE and create a new C style string that's the array of characters and call this a node. And we need two characters, one for the actual node and the second one is for the null character to mark the end of the string and I will type in 144 in the decimal but you can as well type in 0x90 for the hexadecimal or even capital B and then 10010000. All those three are the same. Then inside the loop let's come in all everything and copy the LCD send string and we will send the string called node. On the position 00, zero that should be fine. Hit the upload button and hopefully we'll see the node. And that seems to be the case so we have the confirmation that the used chip is the A variation which means that we have the access to all those built-in special characters. So I want to create a design like this and let's say that for now it's fine if those are just hard-coded characters. I still need to know the character values so I've created this cheat sheet with the decimal values so I don't have to convert the binary values into the decimal values all the time. And then I can of course find out the decimal values for the used characters one by one something like this. So let's jump back into Arduino IDE and create a new variable called line final that will include all those characters. And what I want to do is actually to have one variable to hold both lines in this case for it characters and I'm hoping that I will be just able to draw one line of strings and it will automatically wrap to the next line. So let me type in those individual characters for the first line and also for the second line. We don't need this digit variable, we don't need those commented out lines as well as we don't need those while loop and we want to send the string line final to the position 0, 0. However, as I press the upload button you will see that we only see one line of text. The second line seems to be empty. If I open the driver chip documentation, I can see that the display data RAM is sized 80 by 8 bits, which means that we can have up to 80 characters. Now this display is only using 2 by 16, so my guess is that the second line is somewhere else in the memory, so maybe somewhere closer to the end. Let's try to add more spaces in between those two lines, and the space character is 32. And let's start with 16, so I have to increment the size of the array to be 48. Upload it to the display, and we do see something. However, the line is still not complete. I can count the number of missing characters, and it seems like that we need 8 more spaces. So in here, I'll add 8 more, increase the array size, and upload it one more time. And we can finally see both lines properly displayed on this display. So that's a great first step, and now it's time to make those data dynamic. I want all four of those gauges to be animated, and the numbers on the right side should be increasing or decreasing. And let's actually start with the numbers, because those should be pretty straightforward. We just need to include this special dot character, and draw some of those digits in this small font. To make things simpler, let's create two new integer values called number value max and number value min. And we also need some temporary character arrays to hold those converted to string and I think that we are fine if we only include five characters for each for both the max and min. Let's increment or decrement those in the loop function so the number value max let's just say number value max plus plus which means increase by one and if the value is over 999 we will reset it back to zero. Let's do the similar thing for the min value so for the min value let's subtract one and say that if the value is smaller than zero we will reset it back to 999. Let's convert both of those values to strings using the sprintf function and that function requires an helper array and I just noticed that I haven't used a different name so let's just call this buffer and also underscore buffer for the second one so that will be the helper buffer. Then we need the rules how to convert those individual integers so the percentage d stands for the number and we want to convert the number num value max. Now if we put 0 free before the d it means that we want to add three leading zeros which is exactly what we want and I will copy this and use this also for the min value so it's min buffer and number value min. Let's just quickly test it out so I will comment out this line of code and instead I want to draw the number value max buffer to the first line and number value min buffer to the second line so the y will be 1. Let's upload it to the display and hopefully we will see those numbers decreasing and increasing at the same time. And that seems to be the case, so the first number is increasing while the second number is decreasing. What we want to do is add this special decimal point character between the first digit and the other two digits, and the two digits after the decimal point should be drawn using this small digit font. If I open the character map, you can see that the normal digit 0 is character code 48, while the small digit 0 is character code 128, so it means that we need to increase the character value by 80. So I want to character number 3 to include the value from character number 2, but increase by 80. For the character number 2, we want to use the character number 1, increase by 80. And then we want to set the character number 1, that will be the decimal point, but it's actually a special character with the value of 221. We don't need to change the character number 0 because that's the same, but we want to change the character number 4 because we haven't set it previously, so it could be anything. So let's just make sure that it's set to 0, which is a null character that sets the end of the string. And we want to do the same thing with the min value as well. 
well. And let's quickly test it on the display. Now we see something that resembles the original design much better. Now we can try to combine multiple strings together or maybe copy some memories around. But since we are changing only 8 characters, I think that we can also manually overwrite those individual characters in the main string, which is called the line final. So inside the line final variable, we want to change those four characters for the first line and those four characters for the second line. So we start on position 12 for the line final, and we want to set this to be the first digit of the num value max buffer, so it will be 0. And it will continue like this, so it will be 13, 14, and 15. And that will be set to digit, or actually character 1, 2, and 3. We actually don't want to use the character number 4, because the character number 4 is a 0, it's a null character, so if we set also the character number 4, it will terminate the string, so anything after that will not be drawn. It requires some counting to find this position, but I know that this position is 52, so let's just go with that. So line final 52 will be the min buffer 0, and just like that it will be 53, 54, and 55. That will be min buffer 1, 2, and 3. And we don't need to draw those min and max buffer anymore, we can just draw this line final. Let's upload it to Arduino, and hopefully we will see it together with the error characters. So just like that we have a static progress bars and dynamic numbers on the right side. We should probably include a little bit of delay to slow things down a little bit, but for now let's try to make those progress bars dynamic. And I already have a video where I describe this process step by step. That might be something that you might want to watch. Today I want to turn this into a function so I can draw four of those progress bars without copying code too much. So our gauge might look like this, and in the end it will only take four characters, but it will be easier to understand what's going on when we have ten characters. So in order to draw this gauge, we need to know a few things. We definitely need to know the value of the gauge, and we need to know the size of the gauge in terms of characters. Again, in this case, it's made from ten different characters. It will be nice to know what's the maximum value for this gauge, and since we will be directly setting the characters in the line final variable, we need to know at which position we want to place the gauge. So let's create a function with those four input variables. Let's name this function generate gauge. And so we need the value, we need the maximum value, we need the size and characters. And finally we need to know where to place this gauge as for this line final string. So something like this. Now we can go over every single character and calculate what's the value on the left side and on the right side. And let's call this the minimal value and the maximum value. So for example for this one, the minimal value, the value on the left side will be 30, and the maximum value, the value on the right side will be 40. And then we can compare it with the current value. So if we know that the value is bigger than the maximum value, this piece will be fully filled. If we know that the value is smaller than the minimal value, then the character will be fully empty. So let's start with the loop that will go over every single character inside the gauge. And then we can calculate the min and max values for the current character. So let's call this min care value. And that will be the maximum value divided by the length of the gauge multiplied by y. And just to make sure that this ends up as the floating point value, I will multiply it by 1.0. In the similar way, we will calculate the maximal character value, so max care value. But this time we will multiply it by y plus 1. So we have those values, we can do some comparison. So we will say that if the current value, so if the value is bigger than the max character, value that means that the current character should be fully filled and again we will set the line final character so we'll set the line final character of the position gauge character start plus i and we'll set it to value 214 which is the fully filled character if the value is smaller than the min value so if the value is smaller or equal to the min character value that means that the character should be fully empty so in that case we'll set the line final character to be the value of 32 which is the fully empty character there is also a possibility that the value could be something in between and in that case we want to draw a partially filled character but for now let's just set it to some random value because we don't know what to draw yet so for now let's just set it to 221 which is the bullet point character and we will fix it later on right now we want to see if this function works and if it generates some gauges let's create a few more variables for those gauges and since since I have some icons, I will name those gauges based on those icons. So it will be gauge value node, and I will also set it to some random values. The next one will be gauge value double node. The next icon is bell, so it will be gauge value bell. And the last icon is heart, so it will be gauge value heart. Let's also increment those values in the loop function. So in here, inside the loop, we will increment all of those values. And then add a simple if statement, if the value is bigger than 100, we will go back to 0. Finally, we can try to draw those gauges using the generate gauge function, and it requires the value, so it will be the gauge value node, the maximum value which is 100, the size of the gauge which is 4 characters, and the position inside the line final string, so it's 1 for the third gauge. In a similar way, I will also generate all the other 3 gauges using different values and different positions. 
and all that's left to do is to upload it to Arduino. And we see some gauges being filled. Obviously it's not final because we are only switching between three different characters and we want the in-between character to go from one line all the way to five lines. That is using the characters 218 up to 214. So to finish this generate gauge function, we need to know the value of one line inside the character, let's call this one step. And we can calculate this one step variable by dividing the value max by gauge character length and then dividing it by 5. And then inside this piece of code we can do a few more comparisons. So I'll just delete this line and instead I will say that if the value is bigger or equal to main character value plus one step times 4, this means that the line file character should be 4 lines. So it will be a character number 215. If the value is bigger than the min character value plus one step times three, and I will probably put a few more brackets around here, then we need three lines, it will be 216. And it will continue like this with two more statements. So if it's bigger than two lines, it will be 217. And if it's bigger than one line, it will be 218. And that's really all that's needed. So upload it to Arduino and we should see a nice smooth filling gauges together with the numbers changing on the right side. Now I did forget to tell you that you can get this display in five different colors, being white, blue, red, green and yellow. Unfortunately the yellow was out of stock so I only have four of those. And you can get all of those displays from Aliexpress in under $25 a piece. Now I know that you can get the default blue one for around $5 but there is simply no comparison as for the visual appearance between those OLED displays and the old blue on blue one. And that's it for today's video. If you have any questions, please put those down in the comment section. If there is something that you would like to see next, please let me know as well. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.